Hey, welcome back. And in this lesson, I would share about the view level settings that you find in the Google Analytics account. Remember, view is the place that you find all those reports. So you have to create several views and we'll understand the importance of creating views. We'll understand the importance of having a raw unfiltered view. We'll understand the importance of having one master view and all the other views that depends on your requirements. But remember, view is a place where you find all the reports. So when we talk about reports like audience reports, behavior reports, conversion reports, and many other reports, you remember you have to select one particular view. And in this video, I'm going to specifically emphasize and take you through the practical demonstration, take you through the practical account where you learn about view settings. Remember, every view have gone its own settings. For example, you can give a particular user an access to a view and uh, we'll also learn about the channels, we'll learn about the default uh, channels, we'll learn about content grouping, we'll learn about calculated metrics and we'll learn about many other things which are available in the view level settings. So join me as I take you through the view level settings and continue to watch the video. We will learn, we will learn about the view level settings. So before I go to view level settings, let me reiterate. In Gmail account, you create analytics account like we discussed in the last session. And in one analytic account, you see, this is the account. You create properties and uh, because it's a free account, it's not a premium account, you can create up to 50 properties. And in each property, what you can do is you can create up to 25 views. So remember, in one Gmail account, you can create 100 accounts. In one property, you can create, uh, in one account, you can create 50 properties. In one property, you can create 25 views, right? So because this video is about view level settings, so let's go and focus only about these part. And there are many things in this. I would want to discuss in detail so i'm going to create particular separate videos for each of those topics but however now now because if i want to take you a little further and teach you about the other reports it's good that you have an idea about the view level settings right so view is a place where you actually find the data right so when 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 you put the google analytics tracking code on the site and people come to your site and the tracking code loads that's a property right and when google processes the data it has to put that data in certain view and what view this is where you can find them, right? So I have one view, the name of the view is called all website data. And if you want to go ahead and create another view, what you can do is you can click on create new view. And like this, you can create 25 views in each property. If you want to create more views, then you'd have to go create another property. But uh, you know, it is not recommended that you create no, uh, that you put two web properties on one website, right? It is never recommended that you put two analytics property codes or tracking codes on one website. So restrict yourself to not let, not more than 25 views. So I would not talk about how to create a view here. So since I have one view called all website data, you got to be very, very careful here. Now, before I continue, I want to highlight one point here. You should always have one view called raw data or the master data. And this data you can never, or you should never add any filters because the property of filters is that they are, they are, they are retractive. They're, they're not retractive. That means once you apply a filter, so when Google processes the data, it will not even take the data inside. That means that data is gone. You will not be able to get that. That's why Google recommends that whenever you want to create a new view, it is always recommended that you have one view aside and you don't add any filters to that. And other views that you create, you can add, keep, you can keep on adding a lot of filters to that. We will discuss about filters in detail in my future videos as well. But for now, view level settings, you go here. You know, when you go to view level, is this the view ID that you have? The name of my view is all website data. This is my website URL, right? And then you have the country. And now I won't talk about default page here. Default page here, here is at times what happens is there are certain websites, for example, abc.com. And there's also another page in that abc.com, which is abc slash index.com. You go to either of those pages, you will see, see the same content. That means what happens is when people go to abc.com, people go to same page. People come to abc.com slash index.html, they come to same page. That means two URLs, but the same content is served. But because there are two URLs, what will Google do is Google puts both of them into two different lines, right? You don't want that to happen. That's what you can do is you can put that page, which is uh, index slash HTML or dot HTML as a default page. So what will Google do is, you know, whenever people come to this page, it will still put them as uh, the, the actual page, right? So you can, you can do more study on this. So I'm not going to put here exclude parameters, query parameters. I will discuss about query parameters in my GTM video. So you can connect to my GTM videos where I've extensively spoken about what's a query parameter. Now query parameter is always in a URL and it is always after the question mark. In one URL, you can have multiple query parameters. And if you have multiple query parameters in a URL, what you have to do is you have to put them or you can stitch them together with an ampersand. Now qu query parameters always in key value pairs. So first one is called key. The other one is called value. For example, UTM underscore source is equal to Google. So that UTM underscore source is called the key and is equal to source is equal to, is equal to Google, right? And that Google is the value. And Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager comes with default features where you can store that uh, query parameter. Here, you want to exclude certain query parameters. So in that case, what happens is you can put 
S. Now, why do I put S is here? See, a lot of WordPress sites who have a search box at the top. What what happens is when people go to that search box in your website and type something, so automatically URL adds a query parameter called S, and you don't want that S to be treated by analytics as a new URL or a different URL. So what you want is you want you want Google Analytics to strip all of them because you know, they're searching ultimately on your site. So you don't want that to happen. What you can do is you can simply put S here. S is generally the query parameter value which is used uh, uh, in WordPress sites if you have the search box at the top, right? And then you have currency, right? Bot filtering. A lot of bots happen to come to your site. You don't want to skew your data. You can simply uh, tell Google to not to include them in your in your reports, right? Search site settings is again the same thing. If you have a search box at the top on your website and you want to track what people search on your website, for example, I have a blog and I write a lot of, lot of content about Google Analytics or Tag Manager or social media. So when people come to my site, what they do is they happen to use that search box and search for blogs. So I want to understand what kind of blogs that people are interested in. Or when people come to my website, what kind of blogs they search, what, of con what kind of content they're interested in. So if I want to, if I want to, if I want to track that, then I have to implement something called search, uh, site search tracking and again the query parameter that we put here is s right it is particularly for wordpress so i will not go about all these things because they are very in-depth videos we'll talk about these videos and how you you can retrieve that data in the reports and try and learn more about what users are searching on the site so you can come up with more blogs this is particularly useful for people who are bloggers they understand as to what kind of content that people generally show interest or search on their websites now, user management, you remember, you can give access to uh, uh, other people, you know, the complete account, you can give access to other people for your property, you can give access to other people about your view. Now, goal is very, very important. Goal is nothing but, the, again, goals are divided into two goals, micro goals and macro goals. Micro goals is the, is the main action. Micro goals is the little, little event that people do, which are, again, significant to you. So, you can create two type of goals, macro and micro, and how do you create those goals? And we will talk about these goals in my future video, but here, remember, views can be created from, views can be created from the View. So if you want to create a goal, you can go and create here. We will not create goals because we're only learning about the view level settings here. Right? Now content grouping, for example, if imagine you are a big publisher and you have a lot of content about sports, politics, entertainment, Bollywood, right? And you a lot of people come to each of those pages. So what happens is when you go to when you go to your website and you check the behavior. When you check the behavior report, in the behavior report, what happens is you have something called site content and then all pages. So you'll hear, here you'll find all the pages that people are navigating to or people come to. But I, what I want to do is I want to group all those pages which are related to sports, all those pages which are related to politics. So what I can do is I can come to content grouping and here what I can do is I can group all those pages by setting up rules. And this can again be implemented you know, easily through Google Tag Manager. All you have to do is create a content group here and note the index value. You see, once you create it, once you give a rule, it will give you the index number here. All you have to do is remember the index value and go to Tag Manager and tag from Tag Manager when you fire a page view, there you can specify the, the index number. So Google will be uh, told that these page views have to be categorized into, you know, one content group, right? This is particularly useful if you want to understand what kind of authors get more page views or what kind of, you know, categories get more page views so that will give you more idea about who to contact or if you want to pay high to certain people writing excellent content right e-commerce setting again if you're implementing enhanced e-commerce tracking this is where you have to come and give the settings remember it's very very important if you're working on a website which tracks transactions or if you're selling a lot of you know products right if your website is not transactional website then goals is enough but uh, when you when you're when you're into e-commerce website and you want to track all those e-commerce activity the purchase behavior the shopping cart behavior and the product performance behavior then it is important that you enable this Sim no all right calculated metrics again very very important you have all the default metrics but you want to create your own metric with the available metrics so what you can do is you can use the calculated metrics and uh, this is where you can go and create a calculated metric so how do you create a calculated metric uh, you go to calculated metric here uh, remember, you have to give the name to it and then choose the float and then give, for example, I want to understand, I want to understand how many organic users, organic searches divided by users. So this is this is my own metrics, right? It's not generally not available. So I can go and create whatever metric I want. So my own metrics that I want to create from the available metrics in Google Analytics, I would do them through calculator metrics. Now again, this is in beta version segment, right? We'll talk about segments in detail when we go to report, but segment is one you know category of traffic or traffic that exhibits similar characteristics. You want to put all of them or group all of them into one single bucket. So use segments here. You can create a new segment, or what you can do is you can import segments from gallery that other other people have implemented. 
implemented. For example, one of my friends implemented an excellent segment, and uh, if I could import that, maybe I get a lot of uh, you know, idea about how you know my people on my website are navigating or you know whatever reports I already have. So what I can do is I can go to import from gallery. A lot of people like me, you know, they they share their assets. How do you share their assets? I will tell you. So you can go and import, or if you want to create your own segment here, you can go and create your own segment here. I'm not talking about segments here because this is not about reporting. This is only about the view level settings. This just to help you understand what settings are available at the view level generally. Now annotations, for example, when I come to report, suddenly I find some abnormal behavior. For example, let's come here. I come to overview here, right? Now you see there's something called this. Here I can write an annotation. Right. For example, create an annotation. I say I see a spike here, and I can say, hey, something happened here. I made some changes, and I understand why those changes were. I already troubleshooted so that other people who are working, you know, may also be aware. Uh, or if not, or if not, you know, I myself, when I come back next time, I should be I should be able to understand. Yes, this is expected, and I've already cracked this, so I don't have to spend my time again going and trying to figure out what happened at that time. Right. So this is one good feature, annotations, and and then you have multi-channel funnels. We will talk about multi-channel funnels, but you have a small setting here, multi-channel funnels here. You can go, you can go and create a new attribution model of your own. And uh, when when you come here, right, it, it's giving you all the other options. Right now, I will not recommend you to touch anything of this because uh, it will have an effect on the multi-channel funnel report that you have here in the left side. You see. When you come here, conversions. If you come to conversions, you you'll have a drop down called multi-channel funnels, right? Custom channel grouping. I will create another video, not 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 next video. Uh, I think this would be uh, two videos after this. I'm going to create another video only speaking about channels because a lot of times you find traffic and that traffic is not categorized properly, right? And and that's again not recommended. So that is why you have to you know you know group your tra traffic properly based on certain rules and how we're going to do that we'll understand heavily when we talk about channels right custom alerts if some sort of abnormal behavior happens for example i want google analytics to inform me if if the number of people who visit my site today are less than uh, 100 people suddenly you know i'm away and i i want to be notified so what you can do is you can go and put whatever conditions you want and you'll be notified right scheduled emails if you have scheduled an email you'll find all the emails but right now if i go i will not find anything Save reports. If I have already created a report, I've saved it. I can find them here. And I told you, right? If I have created one segment and I want to share that with other people, so other people can also import it. What I can do is I can simply go and share any of my any of my segments that I've already created. For example, this is a segment, a beautiful segment I've created, and I want to share with my friends. So what I can do is I can give my friends a, a temp template, or I can share them in a solution gallery. Uh, a while back, I showed you solution gallery where you can go and import a lot of segments which are contributed to solution gallery by a lot of experts, right? So this is about the view level settings, guys. I would appreciate Appreciate if you can really spend time understanding these things because it's, un it, it's important that you understand what settings are available at which level. And for now, we discussed about the account level settings and the property level settings and the view level settings. In the next video, I want to talk about the first report, which is the real time report, and you, what you'll find in the real time report. So stay with me as I take you through the next video. Thank you so much again for watching the entire video and stay connected to watch the next video, which would be on the real time reports, the first reports that we would be discussing in the analytics account. And also, not to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe, hit on this notification bell icon right below, so you'd be notified every time you get a new video on our channel. And also, remember this channel is meant to educate people and people who have years of experience still lack these basic foundations, and that is where exactly we want to fill in the gap, and uh, you would learn something very beyond and it's more of a study. It's not something that I'm teaching you. It's something that is very, very practical, very high end. So if you know and you want to build your career in digital marketing, remember, this is one place that you can really, you know, you know, learn and grow with us. Thank you. And I would see you with the next video.